Welcome. I'm Bob Thompson, and I'd like to welcome you to the Philanthropic Planner. Uh, we've been doing this crazy thing for 11 or 12 years now, and people ask me, why in heaven's name do you put on a program about philanthropy that has to be the most boring subject in the world? And I simply say to you and them, because it's important. It's important to the local community, to the state, to the region, to the country, to the world. The importance of Philanthropic Planner is for you and me as philanthropists and for philanthropic planners, attorneys, planners, insurance people, accountants, uh, trust officers. So it's really designed for both. And once in a while, friends of mine, friends, say that they, between commercials of Red Sox or Patriots or whatever it is, they check in and see if I'm telling the truth. So. Uh, we try to have a friendly forum to promote meaningful dialogue about the importance of philanthropy in the community. So welcome if you're the first time. If you're second, I'm surprised you came back. Uh, if you're third, you're either my wife or one of my <laughs> daughters. And if you're fourth, uh, welcome again. <laughs> um, I have to be honest with you that uh, we have a guest today, which is very important. And the can candid comment is this time, this week, four years ago, we had our guest uh, as a guest. And I'd like to introduce Nancy Sheets, the executive director of the Farmington Visiting Nurses Association and VNA. And we were so happy to have Nancy four years ago. And she's here today to give us an update. So welcome, Nancy. Well, thank you for having me back, Bob. It, it really was so much fun. I'm sorry it took four years to come back. But I love any opportunity to sit down and talk to you. Well, you have an important subject to talk about. And, and, I, uh, and at the end of the program, and you heard me say to Karen, the last four or five minutes I have to shift gears. Mm -hmm. But VNA is a part of that shifting gears at the end, so don't let me forget if I do forget. Okay. But uh, you have, I think, uh, well, let me, let me say, uh, four years ago, the title of the program and the most difficult part of putting these programs are, what, what kind of title do you come up with? Uh, well, back then it was a jewel in the community, November four years ago. That's amazing. The jewel of, a the, jewel community. of the community. And today, our title is, catch this, Creative, oh, the juices just keep going, Serving the Community for Those in Need. Nice. Okay? Very nice. So, I mean, usually Karen will laugh at me because I have, you know, props and this and that, uh, you know, crazy. Last time we had, we had costume. We did have costume because it was <laughs> Halloween. It was Halloween. Okay. That's right. So you remember that I craziness. I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, but welcome. I'm glad. I'm glad you're with us. Thank you. It's fun to be here. Now, visiting nurses, mm -hmm. you have uh, about 27, 28 hours a day, mm. nine days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that because I tried to call her 14 times and calling back, and she's so busy. She's so busy, and I find out today that she's got 17 appointments and. We have to speed this up because she's going to take off the mic and run out of here. Uh, you have a busy schedule. Well, we do, but you know, healthcare is a very busy world, and there's never a shortage of things to do, uh, and there's always things that come up. And um, I, I kind of thrive on being busy to begin with, but I love being busy in the world that I'm in because I feel like I'm doing something. And it's a variety of things. It's we a variety do, right. of things. Now, you uh, calendar-wise, and yeah. I kind of cheated a little bit Good and, for you. and got in there and said, "Well, wait a minute, wait a minute." They put on informational meetings, and I, I looked at the calendar. And I was in the website, and I thought, "Hmm, I've got to prepare for any guest." But with Nancy, I really, really have to prepare. And I looked at this, some of these things because I couldn't remember four years ago. And the calendar that they have, you've got to visit the website, and I'm going to mention that two or three times. But I started looking at this as to your informational meetings and what okay. you do right. 
uh, blood pressure tests and sugar blood right, tests right. and just all kinds of things. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Health tracks in Avon, Granby, East Granby, and Eno Memorial, here in the front somewhere. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, Canton, Farmington Library, Farmington YMCA, or uh, Farmington Valley YMCA yeah. in Granby. Middlewoods Farmington, I never heard of that, but uh, Simsbury Public Library, Avon Public Library, Avon Seniors, and on and on and on and right, on. Right. 12 towns? Right. Yeah, well, we, we service 12 towns, um, but especially, too, depending on what people's needs are. Um, for example, this is flu clinic, se flu clinic season. It's uh, never too late to get your flu so shot, so if you haven't had one yet, make sure you get one. Um, I'm going to give you yours. The, but, you know, if you know, businesses call us because they want to try to make things a little bit easier, and there's very few VNAs that will do what we do. We have a, a service team that goes out in the community, and a business will hire us, and we went to the um, Hartford Ath the Wadsworth Athenaeum. We've gone to various other businesses mm -hmm. where we will set up shop for the day for an hour or two, and we'll give all employees the opportunity to have a flu shot. Um, for employees. Yeah, right. And then that way it makes it easier because people know oh. that their staff can't get out and do yeah, things. Yeah. It's hard to make a doctor's appointment. Some people don't really... Um, want to just go sit in CVS somewhere and uh, wait and um, because they're all so busy and it makes it much easier. Uh, a boss will hire us. We come in. We take care of the staff all I day long. I didn't know that. Yeah. Didn't know, because I'm, I'm right. thinking ahead of time that this is town-related right. library, right. senior centers, and that type well, of we thing. Have a, we have a strong, we, it's another thing that makes us a little unique as opposed to other VNAs. We have a very, very um, deep-rooted commitment from the towns that we service, and primarily the 12 towns that we have relationships with, um, we are um, sponsored to an extent by the towns to do good old-fashioned public nursing, public health nursing. So we do a lot of health and wellness programs um, that without donations and some town support, we'd never be able to do because insurance doesn't pay for these sort of things. We do routine blood pressure screenings, routine blood glucose screenings. We will come and do educational talks if, right, if there's something right. new in in the community that people want to learn about we come out I, I've gone to a number of towns and done presentations on end of life on dementia on what's hospice care uh, what's the latest information on treatments for diabetes how to live with chronic illnesses information and education everything so, yeah. yeah and so we go a lot of different places but we wouldn't get to do that if we didn't have a community program that really relies on some of our public donations. That, that's primary. It really is. Donation. I mean, but the towns do support us, and, and the fact that the towns where we live in the Farmington Valley are so committed to public nursing and public wellness for their community, we wouldn't be able to do that without the town support. But we can extend ourselves a little beyond what they do because of our donations. And honestly- And the fact that you have yeah. uh, a very talented staff. You've got we colleagues do. that- uh, right award winners yeah. I read about uh -huh. that uh -huh. uh, you're you're again serving the community for those in need mm -hmm. the uh, and there are a lot of impressive uh, parts of that but uh, the calendar and what you're doing and how you're doing it uh, is in rehab let me let me come in and uh, sure. ask you about this uh, because we have a number of clients in, in our firm that uh, are hospitalized mm -hmm. or um, you know, whatever the circumstance, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're released, okay? Right. So they can ask at that point uh, to, by name, I want to use your services? Absolutely. Everybody, today a lot of things happen in an acute care setting. You have to go to a hospital for certain illnesses right. or operations or treatments. Right. Um, a lot of times today that course of being in the hospital is as short as it needs to be to get that job done. But it doesn't mean that your and recovery is done. And it's because insurance, play. everybody is all about, it's not bad practice, it's not bad business. It's a, do, what's really critical for, to happen while you're here and what can happen in another setting. You don't need to be at the highest level of cost when you could have certain things done either in a rehab center or home. At home. Most people want to be at home. 
And so if your medical needs are such, like you need rehabilitation, you just had a joint replacement. I've had my so knees there's done. Therapy, you, there's yeah. therapy. Your physician will say, you're not done yet. You can't just get in a car and drive to an outpatient clinic. Um, you're kind of stuck at home. Then your physician orders home care. Yep. You have the right. It's a federal law. You can ask for whoever you would like to do that. There are a lot of home care agencies, 70 to 80 licensed home care agencies in Connecticut. We are one in the valley, and people do know us, and they do like us, but you have the right to say, this is who I want. Yeah, yeah. You have to request it. And 111 years old. 12 this year, 112. 112? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's amazing. And a consistent award winner nationally? Yes. Yeah, we've been very fortunate. We have high quality metrics. You know, a lot of what we do because we are, um, you know, our primary licensure is through regulations of the federal government through the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. And so many of our, we have to be transparent and the world has the right to know how do we perform. So many of our skills, um, our statistics of how well we do with somebody, it's all publicly reported. Okay. Um, and because of that, we earn certain credentials in terms of our ratings. And our ratings are really very strong. So we're lucky. We, you know, we've been around for a long time I, because I think the agency and the staff that have committed themselves to this little agency have really created a legacy um, that's really worth fighting for and continuing to work for. So I, I'm happy to be with them. Let me get into the reason to put on this program. Mm. Philanthropy. Yeah money. Yeah. I mentioned uh, you and me as philanthropists. You don't have to be a multi, multi-millionaire to be a philanthropist. You can be a volunteer. Uh, you depend on volunteers? And we do. We, we're a nonprofit organization. Yeah. Um, and every, I mean, part of our regulations require, like, for example, we're licensed in hospice. And a certain part of hospice, in order to qualify for funding, federal funding, um, really a program for hospice does require a certain percentage of volunteer hours and okay, services. Um, and a lot of people wouldn't know that. But it's, we, as a nonprofit, I learned a while ago, probably four years ago, that nonprofits are made up of three groups. They're made up of a board of directors, Which staff, I want to talk about. and volunteers. Yeah. And I think if you're a successful, in order to be successful as a nonprofit, you need to live by the way of recognizing that no one of the three is any more important than the other. Right. So everyone is of equal value. Our volunteers are as valuable to us as my board of directors is. Um, and we have volunteers that work at our food bank in Granby. We have volunteers that come and help us do mailings and, and uh, office work. Okay. Um, and we have volunteers uh, that work in our hospice program okay. with patients directly, patients and families. So. Very you, critical. Group you of mentioned people. board. Yes. You have an impressive board. We do. I have to. I have to say that. Um, I'm on. I just uh, came off of one because of the death of the founder. But uh, this time last year, I was on five nonprofit boards, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to say that uh, having a functioning, committed, uh, in concert uh, board is is critical. They are committed to the vision and the mission of, of the 501c3 charity and so on. And we have a lot of 501c3s out there because of the lack of a committed board. Uh, they're not around very much, even though their services are in demand, uh, but the, the revenue doesn't come in and mm -hmm. they fail for a lot of different reasons. Um, your Employment. You, you are out there. Um, you hire qualified people. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you presently hiring? We are, actually. We're growing. We're really pleased. Can Business I has, apply? You know what? There might be a special place for you at the VNA. I'm sure I could figure it out. <laughs> I'd have to have close supervision, I make, but I we make, could make it work. I make coffee in the morning? That, can, that <laughs> would do it for me. <laughs> I have a special machine. I can't go wrong. Oh, you know, okay. It's a carrot, okay. Well, but, um, but um, no, we, we, 
we've been fortunate at the VNA because we actually are doing well as a little tiny nonprofit, and that's a hard thing to do these days. Um, in part because we really do have a very dedicated donor base, but we also um, work real hard to make sure that people understand who we are, where we are, and that you can choose us, and that you should choose want to choose us because we have very good quality. And honestly, at the end of the day, that's really what it should be yeah. about. Yeah. You want to get better. You want to get better as soon as you can get better. You want to have the right skill level. You want to have clinical people that are going to follow through and make sure that something goes right or that you get your questions answered. And it's right. very hard when you're outside of a medical world and you go home and you have all these pill bottles and all these instructions and you just have no idea because you don't feel well. You have no idea. We're going to make sure we take enough time with you to let you know. But, um, you know, we have seen a growth in our referrals. And so luckily we, we're in the process of adding more staff. Referrals come from where? Hospitals. Uh, acute care centers primarily, okay. Okay. Um, and then nursing homes, uh, assisted living facilities, um, doctor's offices. I mean, we have in the Farmington Valley, we have a number of nursing homes, rehab centers, yeah. assisted living, senior care um, living. Wherever somebody lives, we can get a referral from. We can get a referral because uh, someone's daughter who's in Chicago knows that her mother's in Simsbury and right. mom's not doing well taking right. her medicine so she could call us. Um, it always has to come from a physician in terms of being ordered. It okay. has to really be appropriate that okay. we come to your home. Yeah. Um, that That's the best place for you to receive your care right now because that's what's needed. Uh, but but yeah, we, we receive, we have working relationships with a lot of places and with other colleagues, sister colleagues. You know, we, they might not be able to take somebody on because they uh, have a full case load, Whatever, yeah. and we refer back and forth to each yeah, other. Yeah. How long have you uh, provided hospice services? Wow, uh, that's long a time? good question. It's been a long time. Our hospice program started at least 20 years ago, but it, it may be about that for us in terms of licensure for hospice. Two or three weeks, one of the, yeah. forgive the, uh, the question, but two or three weeks ago, we had three clients in hospice, mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, one of the, well, one of the three was going into hospice as recent as last week mm -hmm. in hospice two days and, and passed. Oh. Uh, family, uh, we, we see this coming, we see this coming, okay. we're anticipating and so on. I want to, back in is not the right way, but uh, my mother was in hospice uh, mm -hmm. for a week, week and a half. Uh, and the family, my brother from Tennessee and I, and family went down. But uh, donations, memorials, uh, we react as a family uh, knowing the services that you provide. Mm -hmm. uh, the obits that we see in lieu of flowers uh, contribute to, uh, and thank you to Joanne and Mary and Karen and Nancy and so on for your services. Um, do you get much of that? We do. It, it's, it would be more the exception than the rule that, that one of our hospice families has not made us the recipient of. The exception? Of, yeah, really. Yeah. A lot of them do. And, and even if they don't because they might want to contribute, you know, everybody has different, um, Philanthropic. What's what's special to your near and dear to your heart? Maybe it's the historical society. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. wildlife and you know the Audubon Society. Yeah. Um, but there's really never a time that I don't that get a letter or a card um, from a family to just let us know how we carried them through a tough time. How pleased how um, special it was the care yeah. that they received yeah. what our volunteers did for them what our staff did for them how every time I even get calls and letters thanking me just because every time somebody called our agency the receptionist answered it in a nice tone yeah. and was helpful and just let them listen and, yeah, you know so important. we um, we do we receive a number of donations based off of our hospice program because I'm a crazy nut I have to say, to uh, any nonprofit, but uh, usually we are, and I just experienced this a couple days ago with one of the charities on the board, we want current cash mm -hmm. and forget about planned giving. Uh. But 
uh, next year's gift unexpected mm -hmm. may come from a will bequest. Right. Two years from now, unexpected, a gift from a trust. Mm -hmm. uh, four years from now, a gift from a donor advised fund, okay? Mm -hmm. So plan giving um, needs to be a part. Uh, do you experience uh, gifts? In that we way? do. If they're they're not to the degree we've never really developed a plan giving society that's large enough where after time you can almost count on it as as part of your income. Right. Um, but we have been very fortunate. We are the benefactors of a number of people's. Um, estates. We've been that in the past. We've been part percentage, you know, beneficiary yeah, where we've yeah. just received money that off of the trust that grows over time, and the trust just stays as it is. Um, and then we've, you know, received. We, we've never known to us so and so. I get a letter from Unexpected. the probate court to let me know so and so, Unexpected. you know, has um, left money to you. Yeah. And um, it's startling, and it's amazing the amount of money that people do have in their estates, and that they because one time 10 years ago you took care of their wife exactly at, and a certain portion of the estate comes to the farm to exactly. Valley VNA which exactly. is just wonderful I yeah. mean and it's really quite a gift and a legacy it's a way to yeah. really live on and so we've you know we have um, it's on our, our web page but we also every time we send out a newsletter and we do have a little spot to and, you know let people know that planned giving consider a gift in your trust or, or a bequest you be Proud of me, Nancy, because yeah, I I I'm have, proud of you, Bob. I have oh, my the God. last issue of, <laughs> of your newsletter and uh -huh. I was going to mention it. And it is, I don't know, it's attributed to you putting this together. Okay. Come on, come on. Where do you find the time? No, this is yeah. very good. Thank you. Well, I, you know, I have I've to spent admit, time. I'm, I spend time. Um, I have to admit, yeah. I haven't seen this before. Well, we do, you know, it's funny, is, we have our patrons okay. like hard copy they like if i okay. send them a newsletter they will read it okay um, so it's been a tradition we've decided not to get rid of it we do have a website and we have some social media but our patrons will still respond by reading our newsletter so it doesn't take me all that much time to come up with it um, and i've spent a fair amount of time with the hartford foundation um, because i want you know i don't think what people need to read about is how many years so and so worked for the vna right. and, you know uh, that we celebrated something in-house um, i think that our donors want to know what happens with their money and true, true. I think that um, I think it's important for them to see what because of their donation this is what I can do because you gave us money I can add uh, clinics and yeah, places yeah. because you helped me you can I don't, sponsor a right. meeting or a, a well, presentation you know, I don't have to yeah or that or I don't you know our biggest issue now that we're addressing is the fact that there's a real access to care problem that's just going to continue to get worse. It's going to grow. Some places, yeah. right, it's hard to get some agencies to say yes to you if you don't have the right insurance. Yeah. Or, well, yeah. and and I and it's a reality in the post-acute care world where we are. We're not in an acute setting, we're post-afterwards. Right. Um, a lot of what, how we all get reimbursed doesn't cover the cost of care. So some people will limit how many types of insurance, you know, patients they take with certain types of insurance, or it just costs them too much money, they, it's too much of a loss. Well, Some insurance it, yeah. reimbursement is so yeah. poor yeah. that you can't afford to keep taking care of those clients. It's like the hospital and the emergency room and people it's, treating the emergency right. room as their personal That's physician right. or something. That's right. so, so the agency that provides that on right. healthcare. So, but we get to say yes because of our donors. You know, I don't turn people away just because they have said insurance. Yeah. We take people because other people have already said no. Yeah. But I can only do that because of the donations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I I have to change gears. Switch gears, there you go. I have to change gears, to okay? Go. But one of the reasons to change gears is uh, VNA, Farmington VNA. Yeah. To me, and, and here's where I'm going, Nancy. Yeah. You mentioned the Harvard Foundation of Public Giving. Yeah. Uh, after a program that I went to on a kickoff uh, announcement program of what the Hartford Foundation is doing for their 29 towns in their region is to gift, to set up, to uh, do critical seeding of an endowment and for immediate grant giving. 
$100,000 to every one of these 29 towns. Uh, my program before Nancy was, this is a great opportunity for these towns, for Simsbury in particular, uh, and the residents. This is not going to the town, it's not going to the municipality, it's not going to agencies within. It is going to residents of uh, Simsbury in this case. Uh, but uh, I wanted to take a minute and just briefly, I made a commitment the last five minutes of our programs going future, or in, in the future, that uh, five magical moments of opportunity. We have a lot of nonprofits. We have a lot of people who are providing critical services like the VNA that uh, has an opportunity opportunity to submit grants to this new functioning town community fund, okay? So what I'm communicating here is one, to make a greater audience aware of this opportunity, two, to solicit uh, people in the community that would like to know more about what this encompasses, what the parameters are, what, uh, how it's structured, and I'm referring to that as a focus group or an outreach uh, group or whatever, to identify, I hate to say, players in town uh, that know other people in town, a lot of people, and who in turn know the groups that need uh, the, to participate in these grants. What, what I'm saying there is if you're interested in participating kind of in this focus group, which is the initial group, and they will select uh, a selection committee of five to 15 people. That selection committee in turn will uh, select an advisory committee. If I'm on a selection committee, I cannot participate on the advisory committee. So there's a process and I congratulate Jay Williams who was a guest, guest on our previous program. Uh, and the board of the Hartford Foundation of Public Giving and making this commitment, and, and this may not be the case, but I, I relate it uh, as an example or an analogy of the Lilly Family uh, Foundation in, in Indianapolis and the school, the Lilly uh, School of Philanthropy, and what Lilly did in the state of Indiana in creating seed monies so that every county in Indiana had a community foundation. Lo and behold, and it's not by accident, uh, it's the Kellogg people did the same thing in Michigan. So community foundations are a critical core of this. I congratulate the Hartford Foundation of Public Giving for taking the initiative of this, and it's a great opportunity. And if we do well, if we do well, I'm hoping that they repeat this year after year after year after year. Think of an, a growing endowment of the residents of the town, an immediate 50,000 grant each year available to uh, needy nonprofits like the VNA or like Simsbury Community TV. Little check. See you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.